What does a Rhodesian Ridgeback look like? It's a simple question, but the answer is a bit more nuanced than most people think. Echo, Penny, and that big lug zero back there are all Ridgebacks, but they each represent distinct aspects of the breed's diverse history. At 60-ish pounds, Penny is about the smallest Ridgeback you'll see, but some modern day Ridgebacks are even significantly larger than Zero. Now, a lot of people have strong feelings about what a Ridgeback should look like, but for this video, my plan is to simply give a visual overview to people interested in learning more about the breed. The original Ridgebacks were descendants of European hunting dogs like Great Danes and Greyhounds mixed with indigenous African dogs, specifically a ridge dog favored by the Khoikhoi Koi people. This painting depicts one of these ancestral Ridgebacks, and unsurprisingly, it looks like a crossbreed with varied traits. Breeds evolve and mature over time, so although they might not have the job they were once known for, Ridgebacks do have a more standardized breed identity. Of my dogs, Echo was the closest to the breed standard. He was about 26 inches tall, 83 pounds with a short wheaten coat, and an even ridge with two whirls of hair at the crown. In our years together, I was stopped by a number of native South Africans who said he most reminded them of the Ridgebacks they knew from home. Penny, at 62 pounds soaking wet, is a runt who heavily favors the breed's hound heritage. Her light frame and sleek features make her a tireless runner. She'd never make it in the show ring, but Penny is the ultimate testament to the working standard of the breed as endurance hunters. Zero is more of a modern American Ridgeback prototype. Larger stature and features, so he can't match Penny's endurance, but he's still extremely athletic for his size. One of the most common inquiries I get is about where to find a Ridgeback of one particular mold or another. Here, I always champion the work of responsible breeders. Their guidance and knowledge of their dogs is invaluable. John, Echo's breeder, is heavily involved in lure coursing, so he prefers a traditional breed standard and favors dogs with a history of successful running. His deliberate efforts led to Echo developing into the dog he predicted. And while none of us could have predicted Penny, she has certainly lived up to the billing as a wild wonder off the leash. In contrast, Mary, Zero's breeder, is not as focused on lure coursing, so her breeding pair did not particularly emphasize that goal. Her aim was for a consistent foundation litter to build upon. For people new to the breed, I think Zero's litter offers insight into how what a Ridgeback looks like is part science, part art, and part luck. To see what I mean, take a look at mom and dad, Simba and Sadie. You can see aspects of both parents in Zero's large features, but you can also see them in a different way in his sister Haley's finer shape. Bennett, another male, has features closer to his dad, while Harlow's shape is clearly more feminine. Rex is another blend. He's most similar to Zero. While sisters Scarlet, Willow, Ray, and Ginger each have their own unique structure and color. These side-by-sides should help illustrate that both color and structure change as a pup grows. There's no way to perfectly predict how a dog will end up. I mean, who could have predicted that this pudge ball would grow up to be the wiry Amazonian who puts dogs twice her size in their place? One thing you can be absolutely certain of is that a puppy's ridge will not change. It's a common misconception that the ridge grows in later, but please run far away from anyone who claims this is true. The breed standard calls for a ridge with two even whorls on the crown, but what that ridge looks like has no effect on the health of the dog. It's only really relevant in the show ring. In fact, I sourced a bunch of unique ridges here, and I think it's pretty cool to see the different ways it can grow in terms of size and shape. Of course, we also need to give our love to the slick back friends who remind us that a ridge is not a requirement for a ridgeback. I've gathered some other images of ridgebacks here with unique colors, facial masks, and markings to show a small example of the wide variety of ridgebacks in the world. Because while there is a breed standard, I happen to love all the things that make each dog unique. 
And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Although you may not think this dog passes the smell test, that is a rare black and tan Rhodesian Ridgeback. Everyone has their own preferences, their own ideas, and their own ideals. But I think my favorite type of Ridgeback happens to be the one I meet next. The one who shows me something about the breed I haven't seen before. But I will say my favorite thing about the way a Ridgeback looks has nothing to do with what you can spot up close. I love that no matter their color or ridge or markings, when you see that silhouette bouncing and romping, you can spot that Ridgeback heart from a mile away. 